paraphrase your questions. So what I'm hearing is that you have a people who are into business analysis domain. They try to write a feature as they are comfortable with. And as an agile team, you find easier to work with user stories. So how can you make those people write user stories? Is this the question? Okay, great. Any suggestions? Yeah. Like, uh, if the, is the group uh, who is going to use that your application or something? If they are the stakeholders, then uh, you should have a maybe a product owner will be playing a role to understand that one. And uh, if product owner is not having that much of time, then someone like BS should be helping the product owner to getting it right these stories. So that uh, development team and the other side stakeholders will be having the same page. So, no, I'm so what, what I'm hearing you are saying is that we find someone who is in between and who can understand the feature and write the user stories. Are you saying that? Okay. Fear because of that is that we, we lose the essence of business because of pressure of agility or some can you write in these aspects or something like that. We so his fear is that in the process of translation we, have, we may lose some of the essential information which was there in the feature but didn't get converted when the thing got split into user story. That's a fear. So maybe, maybe we, we can talk. Yeah, you then, can okay. uh, that's the responsibility of product owner. Like he should be. Yeah, who is the product owner in their case? So they don't have something. Yeah. For example, so okay. this just leave the scrub rules aside. Okay. Think like that they are an offshore development right. team and they have a somebody called product owner as a business okay. analyst. Product but uh, there are there are stakeholders who are at on site and these stakeholders have written some features. Now these guys are struggling to develop those features. They want to split into a user stories, and they they are figuring who should do it. They have a business analyst. When he does it, he misses few things, and then they remain in trouble. So what can be done? Uh, two things. What probably can uh, I can answer in, uh, in uh, two groups. Uh, in my organization, we used to practice something called as paper napkin diagrams. Okay. So a particular user experience person or any person who has an understanding, a product manager will roughly draw what are his understanding of what he is trying to uh, you know, put in or propose it. He'll approach to the uh, group which is identified. It could be a, a user group, pre-sales, sales, whatever. Present his own concepts first. That gives a insight to a person who is trying to figure out or give you ideas of what should be or what customer expects. Now this helps to trigger a lot of you know discussion in terms of uh, what changes are needed when you uh, want to formulate your roadmap for the product. Eventually we. Uh, we draw a tree diagram which is called as you know which derives lots of workflows in your product so the product owner who is proposing these diagrams will eventually start branching out lot of things based on the interviews that is been conducted with a preset of questions once you formulate these questions you start mapping to those trees once your tree diagram is ready, the tree diagram itself is, if it is done nicely and with the intention of deriving the roadmap, then eventually the person or any business analyst can really formulate epics. And then the branches can go as a rough raw user story. Architecture wise, whatever is your required to support those user stories in order to frame the, you know, your forecast and prioritize, your architects, your business analyst will eventually support those features. So you are extending his reply by giving a tool so that the communication gap which he fears can get reduced. Uh, in a different aspect of it, like how uh, if I, I don't know the user or I don't know, uh, I have a user who really doesn't want to script me give a paragraph that this is a requirement. Then 
this is the way I. Okay. Any other? Yeah. In other way, I mean, as you said that there might be a seepage or something. I mean, irrespective of that, let's create the user stories, okay? And let's prioritize those things. Send it for review. Let's see if there is any seepage. And plus, we also have a demo for after every sprint. Which can show the customer that what we have. Uh, so maybe try to engage stakeholders yeah, yes. and bring some level of validation yes. for the features and user stories and use tools like these so that their free base could be less. So, uh, one point and one point is like, say, for example, acceptance criteria for all these things in the report. So, there are any some big important questions in other way around we can ask to these business stakeholders. Eventually, that will give the answers to all of our these things. Are there any important questions or some bias or so it's more about your context because you may not have a pre-scripting as the business analysis skill becomes so less important. So again, you can have some templates of five bias and when, who, when, where, why, those kind of stuff, which can give you a good starting point. But there could be always a missing point because template always is a risk. Also, people don't go beyond template. So that that is need to be played with care. Why do you need user story? Why can't you just directly work with features? Yeah, yeah. No, why? Yeah, try to understand the features only, but asking them, making them aware of, say, if we wanted to have some effects, then we are going to have some. Why? Why can't you just work with features? What stops you? It's irrelevant for them to uh, practice Scrum. Yeah, no. Even Scrum is good with features. Yeah. Maybe you are unable to develop one feature into a yeah. So yeah, maybe there could be a one feature which you are unable to develop in a one sprint. So it's start of whole a big project or something where we are asked to have a gathering of business. So maybe just like in in safe Scrum language, agile language, you can say it's an epics or big stuff which are not user stories. But why a user should be carry or a stakeholder should carry a whole small work. Why can't they make you run the three months stuff on it? Maybe you need to tell that why part to them. This one is means the why break down in the feature. Don't break down. Then what? You will not get anything in three months. And that is something we may need to communicate to the stakeholders so they collaborate in the trees and reviews and all that if we just pick up your feature, you don't come to know what is going on for three months. So we have a need of doing it in a smaller chunks so that we can take feedback on a running product. Do you want to help us in doing that? Because that is the goal. And see the value. And see the value. They, they, do they, they care about it? Now, if they don't care about it, then you may need to question yourself that are they doing too much scrum and which is not needed by the stakeholders. Even you develop user stories, you give a demo, but they don't look at it. They say, I will only look at it when my feature is over. So, then you are creating an unnecessary mess. We are not solving the problem. We are not making them aware that a small chunk helps me to prioritize well. Small chunk help me to see the output well. If your business analyst is just doing user story splitting, then prioritization might be done only at a feature level again. Your stakeholder is still doing the prioritization at the feature level, so the decomposition is not giving that desired value. Maybe you need to have a conversation and share the advantages associated with this way of working. And then the tools, communications can find a way when people are in agreement of this way of working. Once the way is agreed, then we can find out how to reduce the communication gap, how can we go rapid user story themes and validations and all this stuff. And this is sometimes we do this mistake where we don't understand the perspective of other person and we try to map everything in Scrum and Agile. So last time when I was conducting a similar meetup, two, three weeks ago in Bangalore, we got the similar question. The question was different though. The question came into, we want to use Agile. But our management, middle management, don't want to use agile terminologies. They don't want to use user stories, they don't want to use scrum, and they don't want to use sprint. How to make them use agile? So, again, the, the, the need is same. Why to use agile? Are they buying into it? Once they buy into it, they may talk about user story, or you may talk about feature. Both ways. And scrum, in fact, as a process framework, is open with working with anything. Scrum framework says you have a product backlog and you have a product backlog items. 
product backlog items could be anything. It's you to define it. But they do recommend when you pick up a product backlog item, do finish into a one sprint. Else you don't have a measurement of progress. So don't run a one product backlog item into a multiple sprints. But whatever theme you want to give it, it's okay. Good.